Our next guest, Philadelphia Stars defensive back, Ahmad Dixon, former Baylor All-Conference safety as well. How have you been? I've been good, man. Just blessed to be out here playing ball again. Man. But I'm good. How you been? We're doing well. Craig's with me. Paul's with me. David Smoke, Ahmad Dixon with us as well. Ahmad, what did you truly believe or what did you expect from the USFL? And has it been a little bit better than you thought? Uh, I mean, I, I honestly didn't go in with, with much thought about it. Just wanted to come in and play this game that I love, contribute to help help this help our team get to where we are, where we're headed to this weekend, and that's to the to the championship. What was it? What's been the process of being in Birmingham for so long and doing that? That's got to be. I mean. You're not going anywhere until you get to Canton, where you are right now. It's it's kind of be strange launching a league. It, it definitely was. It was it was a a, a very different experience uh, having eight teams uh, in one city, over three hundred plus guys all staying in one area. Uh, we all had to utilize the same facility, utilize I mean same training staff, utilize all of the same things. So it was I mean it was a pretty different situation different scenario but uh i mean it, it as far as my team it, it, it gelled us together uh, a bunch of guys coming from a bunch of different areas different places different walks in life and us, us being in that bubble as, as we call it it, it brought us together uh, and, and helped us get to where we are now Ahmad, you've uh, had the experience to take part in, in all sorts of different leagues, whether for a lengthy time or a short amount of time. I mean, you, you've had the NFL, the CFL, XFL, now USFL. How would you describe this experience versus maybe some of the others? Uh, this one is a, a little little more personal uh, due to the fact of my growth and, and things that I've learned in life, not only about this game of football, but also about myself and, I, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly just grateful and blessed to have this opportunity. Like I said, I mean, it, it, it helped me just stay rooted, uh, and, and I'm forever grateful for it. Ahmad, we've had you on the show during some difficult times in your life. When you say what you've learned about yourself, it's a part of life. You almost wish, I know I do, that you know, you, you, you'd love to be able to live life backwards because we'd be a lot smarter. But <laughs> what have you learned about yourself? Uh, one one thing that I learned about myself is that I, I, I needed to, to take time and just analyze things before I react. A lot of times when I was younger, in my, my younger days, I would just react off of my emotions or my first thought of what I felt. But growing and, and learning from those things, those past mistakes, it, it taught me that I need to take a step back sometimes and just evaluate instead of reacting. What's uh what's it been like with this coaching staff and 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 Bart Andrus and 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 everybody there? What what have they been like to work with? They've been great. Uh, they're they're, diff- they're a different batch of guys. They're, they're, most of them are coming from uh, the CFL, but they have a different way about playing the game. But I mean, they're they're a great staff. I mean, those guys have have helped us tremendously, and I mean, they're they're players' coaches. Um, they they do a good job of hearing our voice and, and, and helping us do whatever we need and, and assisting us in whatever we need. And honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, honestly wouldn't want to play for any other group of coaches than these guys here with the Stars. Ahmad, if you could go back to when you were drafted by the Cowboys and the emotions at uh, the barbecue place at Vtex because I was there. <laughs> but if, yes, you could, if you could go back – and go back into those off-season workouts and into training camp and be who Ahmad Dixon is now as a person, how many years would you still have been in the NFL? <laughs> uh, we'd probably be having uh, a different conversation. Probably be more about contract talks and <laughs> where I'm headed to next and all of those type of things. But I, I truly do believe that I would have still been there. But like I said, everything happens for a reason, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, I was blessed with great people, a great support system, all of that. I have my, my kids. I mean, a lot of things has changed, has transpired from that time to now that I'm, I'm very grateful for. But if I could go back and, and do that all over again, I, w- I, w- I would definitely take a totally different approach to it. 
Hey, we all have those. We get, you know, all of us as we grow, we we all have those. Yeah, we, we would have done that a little bit differently, but like you said, I mean, it is what it is, and it, it turns out to be a blessing in many cases. Um, in terms of the opportunities, I know there's some guys who played in the Big 12 that are on the, the Stars roster, but it's kind of a scatter shot. It's guys from all over the place. Who have been some of the, the players that you've maybe knew before or have gotten to know that are new and, and that you've enjoyed being teammates with? Uh, one guy, uh, a guy named uh, J Mo. Well, we call him J Mo. Uh, he's number thirty. He's a linebacker, and uh, he he actually my pre- my senior year he was a freshman at TCU. He was a starting running back okay. at TCU. He actually scored his first touchdown on me <laughs> at TCU. But uh, he's he's a linebacker now, and and we're getting the work in the hand. And it's, it's it's been a great experience with with him. Uh, another guy, young guy named Armani Dennis. He comes he comes from a very small school in in Wisconsin, named, uh, by the name of Carthage University, and uh, he, he's probably one of the youngest guys on the team. But I mean, he he's also helped me grow in, in so many ways and with my leadership and all of that type of stuff. But he's a great guy. I mean, all of these guys on this team are great guys, and. and they, they they became brothers. A lot of them have became brothers to me. Even guys that are on the offensive side. I mean, some of these guys will, will, will be guys that, hey, when it's all said and done in life, these guys will be at my funeral and at my wedding. <laughs> Ahmad, uh, you, last year you got uh, the opportunity to work uh, at your old high school with Midway with Coach Anderson. I was there, I think, on your second day of practice when I walked in and saw you. You uh, you were enthusiastic about that. What's it been like to, you know, you've taken a break from that and playing the league right now, but to get to kind of share your wisdom with the younger generation? It was a great experience. I mean, a lot of those guys, I mean, they know me from a player standpoint. A lot of them were too young to have really just interacted with me on a personal standpoint. But being there, they got to see a guy that's been at a, a high level, played in high major school and all of that stuff, but be able to come back and give them tools. And, and those those guys, I mean, like you said, I was enthused. And it, it, it brought something out of me that just, I mean, it, it, what Coach Anderson is doing is just great over there. I mean, it, it's, it's a great program. He's building it back up to where, where it was when I was in school. And, but, man, I, I'm looking forward to when I get back home to going back out there and, and helping helping Midway get back to where we need to be. You going to be around on the sidelines again this year? Yes, sir. I'll be there. If if, if God, God willing, I don't yeah. get a uh, NFL call, yes, sir, I, I would definitely be on the sidelines with Coach Anderson in the back. Well, I'll definitely see you down there, and we'll say what's up. And, and the best news of all, Ahmad, they're in a different district this year. <laughs> they get, they oh, get, man. They get, they get back <laughs> to more. God has prayers. <laughs> yes. Get back to more of the, the schools that they're used to seeing. So that, that'll that be nice, won't it? Yes, sir. Definitely. Definitely. But, I mean, we, we I won't make it seem as if we didn't want to be there. Sure. We're always up for the competition. But, I mean, sometimes we, we just need to get in better situations to, to help us out. And that was something that we needed at, at Midway, which is just getting a better district yeah. that wasn't as, as, as powerful as, as that one is. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of the top districts in the country. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's not very many teams in the country that can come in that district and, and win the game, let alone win that district. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're fortunate enough to have gotten out of that and, and gotten somewhere where we can, we can actually help these kids build confidence and not just go out there and just keep losing games and losing confidence because of, of losses on the field. Great point, there man. Was, yeah, it's an incredible point. There's a time when Midway was at that level where they could beat Duncanville or play head up with anybody and, and beat some of the elite teams because they were one of the elite teams, but a drop, a little bit of a drop. Next thing you know, you blink and you're going uphill. You mentioned the NFL. Does that yeah. still – does is, is that dream still alive and – do you feel like this gives you any chance at all? And what would you tell teams if they called you and said, why you now? Why me now? Um, I, I would honestly say me now, I'm, I'm a, a more reasonable person, reasonable person, like I said, within my mind, how I approach things. Uh, I don't always think of myself first. And I, I was, I'm not saying that in the sense of me being egotistical. It was just that, I always had a tip on my shoulder, so I always felt like I had to put myself first or, or make myself more noticeable. Whereas now I'm I'm just blessed. I mean, I'm just looking at everything as a blessing and taking it for what God is giving it to me. As I mean, that's it. I mean, you're going to get a God that, that loves these games, that's, that's 
passionate about it. They're going to come out every day and give you everything I got. How much have you followed what Baylor's doing? I've been keeping up quite a bit, quite a bit, and I'm I'm, I'm really liking what's going on. I haven't been been up there in a while, but I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing from uh, from a distance. So I'm I'm liking it. All right, uh, we've got Phil Bennett coming on after you. Oh, don't bring that up. So I know I know that uh, his volume with you was kind of yelling and then half yelling. Uh, that's, yeah. you, especially you and Orion. Uh, <laughs> but but do you have like do you have something you want us to ask him or or bring up that we can maybe maybe we can turn it around and embarrass him uh, this time around. <laughs> Well, you know what? I just want y'all to uh, ask him why. Why did he have to meet me on the field during uh, that Oklahoma game when I was in the back of the end zone celebrating? I just want to know why come he couldn't wait for me to get to the sideline to chew me out. <laughs> <laughs> he will he, ask. I mean, he met me. On, I mean, almost at the at the fifty yard line, and he was already. I looked to the sideline, so as the where blew the whistle, and I'm like, oh, here he goes. He's ripping me a new one. And I could tell from the from the field he was he was on one. When what Oklahoma game was that? That was uh, my senior year when Blake Bell got oh. down. We stopped him on the on the fourth down stop on the goal line. Yep. Oh yeah. 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 Is that the, the... And I decided that's when I decided to pump the crowd up instead of be being focused on the game. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> was that the, the, the week night game? Yeah, the one the, with the all black. Yeah, the all black game. Yeah, the all yeah. black game. Man, that was, black game. that was an atmosphere, wasn't it? That was a that was a crazy setting. That was an awesome game. Uh you know, I, I have to ask all the former players when they talk about you know, you just referred to to the current program, but where were you uh during the Big Twelve championship? Were you able to watch that live? And if so, what were your thoughts on that goal line stand? Man, I, I watched that whole game from start to finish, and, and and that play that was made, if I'm not number twenty five, is the one who made that play. If I'm not mistaken, man, it was it was just a beauty to see. Man, I I, I couldn't do nothing but just scream and jump with with joy. I mean, not only have have the players of Baylor, but Baylor University as a school, as an institution, has went through so much within these past couple of years, and and to see things. Getting back where they where they need to be, where they should be. I mean, it's it's great to see, and, and I'm 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 really ready to see what what's in store for Baylor University. All right, give us a scouting report. You're playing Birmingham. It's Philadelphia, Birmingham. They were also elite back in the day when the USFL first started. When it was on, it was still you know playing for just a, a, a couple of years or so. Uh, your thoughts? You guys are kind of a surprise team, right? I, I don't know how much. Uh, the expectations, I'm not sure how anyone could really tell because it's so new, but what about Birmingham? Uh, to be honest with you, Birmingham is a, a good team. They're, they're, they're a sound team. They make very, very little mistakes. And the way you beat them is, is by you you not making mistakes and you making them have mistakes. And if you go out there and you just try to play an even football game, they're a good enough team to just beat you with neither team making a mistake. So it's almost like you have to play a perfect game. I mean, the coaches are good coaches. They do a good job of, of breaking down film and knowing what, what the opponents are doing. But, I mean, to be honest with you, it's not really about them. It's about us. We have to go out there and execute and, and do what we know we can do and play the game that we play and, and execute what Coach calls. Ahmad, uh, good luck. And I, I hope this does lead to something else. Although it's great that you're getting a chance to play in that championship game for Philadelphia against Birmingham. It is always great to talk to you. It's also, as someone, all of us in different ages, it's also great that you're learning about life and learning about how things happen and what you learn from that. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but it's been great to watch you grow up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I thank you for being there through the whole whole way through. We will always be there for you. That's what it's about, right? It, it, it's, yes, yeah. yes, sir. And uh, hope, hopefully we do not see you at Midway unless you're just popping in. But if we do and you're out there because the NFL opportunity doesn't come, then uh, we look forward to seeing you there, man, here in a, here in a couple months. Yes, sir. And, and, and this, I'll say this on the air. Uh, if I get that call, you guys will be the first ones to know. Wow. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. We love that. We have seen you – dance in celebration, uh, <laughs> enjoy championship moments, and we've also seen you in tears in many ways from joy and also sadness and coming back. Thank you, man. We appreciate you. Ahmad, good luck.
Yes, sir. Thank you. Ahmad Dixon, Philadelphia star safety. He was a hell of a player at Baylor. And he was also 